Hello students, welcome to EPG Patashala. I am Dr. K. R. Ram Mohan, Associate Professor, Head Department of Anthropology, Sikkim University. Today we are going to talk about a module on enlightenment. This module comes from the paper Theories and Methods in Social Cultural Anthropology. Before we start this module, let us see what are the learning outcomes. Students will able to know what are the historical conditions of enlightenment period. Students will know what are the different aspects of enlightenment and students will know who are the critical components which proposed in this enlightenment period and lastly students will able to appreciate the beauty of enlightenment period. When we talk of enlightenment we should not get confused with what Buddha has preached enlightenment. So this is nothing to do with enlightenment from Buddhist point of view that one is enlightened. So here the concept of enlightenment is understood in a context that it was an historical period which comprises crucial developments of uh, western civilizations as long as in the 18th century. So this historical period of age of enlightenment is a period of in the history where in all the European countries involving so many developments taking place in Germany, Britain, Scotland, Russia and even Atlantic to influence the uh, substantial influence and uh, the thought process. So before we understand the age of enlightenment, one has to also understand what are the other phases of historical periods that which led into the age of enlightenment. So first it was Renaissance and Humanism which started sometime around 14th to 15th century. A complete revolutionary thinking which dethroned the church or the religious based organizations which led to a movement called the Renaissance movement and which also led that humanism, that human capabilities and humanity is prime important which led to other forms as Reformation and natural philosophy which flourished during 16th and 17th century. So these are the two phases which gave to the pavement of age of enlightenment. So now enlightenment marked with most successful point which includes various dimensions like social, political, cultural and intellectual movements. So if you, if you take one by one, what is social? The social development of humanity with the enlightenment mark with the decisive turn to modernity. Before that, these two aspects were not there. So as a society, people started thinking about the welfare of human beings. How as a collective human beings can progress towards modernity. And it also marked the political aspects that there were series of revolutions took place in France and even in USA. And again we have this cultural and intellectual moments where enlightenment marked with the advent of rationality, science, religion and progress. Now with this one can understand how these events have come together. Rationalism which gives further way to empiricism which is profound thinking by Immanuel Kant. Then we have a series of scientific thinking from Democritus to Newton. There is exploration of new things, invention of printing and which led to modern science. This again further gave science, economy slash money, which has also witnessed some kinds of wars, 
So with this development, there is a flourishment of social sciences from Newton onwards to Jean Jack Rousseau. There was some kind of mixture of theology and science. Then science which gave to early positivism, like from Quetelet to Saint Simon, Saint Simon to then Auguste Comte. These were the starting points for positivist thinking or positivist methodology in studying natural phenomena like physics, chemistry, and other natural sciences. And they have this varieties of positivism, which clearly says that positivism should be based completely objective. Positivism looks for facts. Positivism looks for empirical reality to understand or to study anything in this society. It could be natural phenomena, mostly. So this also led into to study, to understand what is ethics and social science. Now, if you look into various sections of enlightenment, the first one is what is good in this society? which gives us the political theory or the ethical theory and religion in the enlightenment period. So in a sense, the concept of justice, jurisprudence, government, all institutions comes under how to form this government, who should lead, what is good, what is bad, all these things comes under in the process of what is this goodness. Then we have the true sciences or the exact sciences starting from physics, chemistry, mathematics, biology, which all these subjects takes this epistemology, that is the theory of knowledge. What is knowledge? Where does knowledge come from? What are the conditions of knowledge? What makes good knowledge? What is true knowledge, what is untrue knowledge, all comes under the realm of epistemology and metaphysics. What is beyond the sun? Two words, meta and physics. What is beyond the sun and moon, which gives a quest for knowledge? With these things, one can understand the beauty of enlightenment. Now, in the true science, the aspects of epistemology, metaphysics and enlightenment, which has a sequence of rationalism and the enlightenment. Rationalist thinking, whether to accept the universal truths about what is right and what is wrong, what is good and what is bad at an universal level. These are the universal levels. And with this, it paved way to empiricism. In a sense, that one has to look for the factual evidence when we study natural phenomena. How to believe that what you see, which is not based on your subject to experience, but it should be objective, it should be verifiable, it should be time tested. In that sense, it should be empirical. And again, the skepticism that one has to be critically argue and critically know whether this is right or wrong. We can see, hear, taste things and we accumulate experience so that we can make generalization. So one must be skeptical in a sense that not in a negative way, but it has a positive connotation that unless you experience, unless you test with yourself, only then you can accept that this is a universal truth. So truth lies behind the way you are skeptic about that in a positive way. Then which leads to the stage set for science of man and subjectivism in enlightenment, which is the hallmark of rationalization in terms of standardization of the knowledge and also looks for unities universally. Now, Coming to the political upsurges that have taken place during the period, Thomas Hobbes believes that there is always a natural interest, a tendency which makes people self-interest. 
that I have to prosper, I have to own certain things, I have to grab all these things, and which made form societies. And this also could be perhaps a little clue to understand the origin of society, either rationally or empirically. And people also started to have this, to control certain things, to be under you and should be recognized with authority, which also led to a social contract. And with this scheme of things, in this period, there were certain unrest and wars have taken place and which culminated in French Revolution, American Revolution, which gave that human beings are fighting for self-interest in the terms of war. Now, Francis Bacon, considered to be the father of experimental philosophy, which gives us the concept of induction. The use of direct observation to confirm ideas and linking the observed facts so that we can make theories. This method of induction is ultimately as given for, under, for practical understanding. Similarly, John Locke has viewed human nature as completely in an optimistic way and he stated as the state of nature is basically peace and tranquility. And he proposed this concept of social contract that all human beings, we are in some kind of a bondage which culminates in social contract that I have to do some, you, all these things. Preservation of property, production of the natural freedom, and people in the state have enjoyed when we are in this contract. So at one level you have preservation of property, at another level you have protection of your natural individual freedom. So both John Locke and René Descartes brings this epistemology and the problem of objectivity with these helps of methods by the way of their ideas. So it all began with positivism which had its earlier predecessors, starting with Quatley, Saint Simon, and mostly popularized by sociologist, or father of sociology, August Comte. And before Saint Simon, there's Montesquieu. And after Comte, Herbert Spencer, Emily Durkheim, Marcel Maas has taken seriously the positivist method of understanding society in sociology. That means how a natural phenomena like sun and moon and water or air is studied, the same methodology should also be put in for society. This is a scientific methodology of studying society. Hence, Sociology should become a natural science of society. Now, so in the context of this enlightenment, modern systematic philosophical aesthetics not only just first emerged, but flourished there. According to Cassier, in 18th century, was not only a century of philosophy, the quest for knowledge, the quest for wisdom. But it also saw, on the other hand, the age of criticism. Criticism, in a sense, not in a negative way. They are rooted through arts and literature. The process of critiquing has also started. So it is a beautiful science which deals with the intimate connection between human sensibility and nature's beauty. So thus enlightenment promotes or promoted an affirmative with 
French classicism and the German rationalism, enlightenment to subjectivism, and late enlightenment. To summarize, students must understand that the flow of ideas, the flow of scientific theories must have some base. How theories have developed? What is the roots of these theories? How did it evolve? It, it must have some historical base. So it all started with the 14th and 15th century Renaissance. Then it started, culminated with natural philosophy and 17th and Reformation. And during 19th century, this whole enlightenment process started, which made all the scholars to contribute their thinking, the thought process about the nature, about society, starting from rationalism, rationalism to skepticism, skepticism to positivism, and the positivism to other scientific theories have flourished. As society is a complex thing to understand, and cannot be described with one single theory, one has to understand the beauty of this enlightenment period, which flourished with rigorous, critical, different approaches of studying nature and society.